Reel that beautiful EverQuest footage. Welcome back everybody, this is Dustin from Sarleon's EverQuest Adventures, and today's episode is going to contain arachnophobia, acrophobia, glitches, and other common issues with the state of EverQuest in 2023. Need I say more? Anyway, here we go, getting started out here. We come across a blizzard hunter on our way up to the... Our first destination is the crystallized camp. So um, just a heads up on these. They have an option or opportunity, a rare chance of dropping either of those items, spider fur gloves or spider fur boots, which are both great upgrades. So keep an eye out for that. But this is just to provide a summary example. There was a bard kiting in here. So um, you can watch. I'll do another run up here soon. But um, yeah, today's episode, we're going to be exploring Velkator's lab, Labyrinth, or as I was a teen, I'd call it Velkator's Laboratory, because looking at the names and what goes on here, it seemed like a laboratory to me, but maybe that was just me. But somebody asked me quite a while ago to go over the name camp, which is Crystallize, Frenzy, Lore, Frenzy, and Upper Frenzy for Necromancers quite some time ago, and I apologize this has taken so long, but I wanted to kind of give an overview of the camp oversight, some of the names you can come across here, and how to actually break these camps or step into these camps as a solo Necromancer. Now I'm gonna say straight out of the way, you're gonna benefit from a duo here from, I don't know, two Necromancers, a Druid, etc. So anyway, Kind of off to the start here. I usually take this left path. There was a bard kiting, but it looked like he was just kiting the lower ramp. We caught, I, again, I'm gonna need invis. You also need a C invis item. So before I get too far out, if I didn't mention that, you must have C invis on at all times, either through your dead eye spell, Chogar Maged, Harvester, anything that has C invis. I would recommend highly a wearable scene biz but um back to that little area we're going to be flopping here to get by due to that caveat um right here you're going to be this is the first area you want to be really careful about in this area velkator's lab is no labyrinth is known for its ramps platforms uh, you can't levitate in this zone and it's also got slippery slippery ramps in EverQuest Zone, what else can you say? Danger and folly abound. But uh, be careful right here. You get this triangle that's a drop down. You can easily create some trains. So what I do is I obviously flop around. At that little triangle, you can see right there. Yeah, just right to our right. <laughs> There's some of the trains I was talking about. I'm just going to invis and go up here. This is weird. But you're going to just... Take a hard right, come up the ramp, should be good. Here's the uh, first kind of platform you want to get to. And here's one of the glitches I was talking about. <laughs> this is so weird. I don't know what was happening, but it's, um, what do you say? It's, <laughs> this is what EverQuest is made of, especially Velkator's lab. Pathing here is horrible, so note that here, it's just a it's an atrocity. It's as bad as Halloween Stone's basement. So be prepared if you travel. And here's where you need C invis. A lot of these crystalline spiders will cast the air elemental invis. Um, up there is where I'm looking at the lore frenzy. Here's the crystallized hall or the hallway. Here's kind of where we're gonna be fighting and root rotting from. Once you get this cleared out, you can move up to the Lore Frenzy camp. But due to the nature of that train I came across, I'm just going to camp out to be safe. And I came back and got my pet all summoned and ready to go, ready to grind. And <sighs> be prepared if you come up to this camp. It's feast or famine. You got things like um, 
It's like the land before time. They finally found the promised land and then they get rushed by all those dinosaurs and they eat everything. That's kind of what EverQuest in these camps remind me of sometimes. I was hesitant to do this because you got people perma camping it around here and it's just, you'll have to get here at some odd times to make sure you can secure, secure the camp. But I'll be showing you a trick later on to kind of get to upper frenzy, which is rarely camped. All right, so just as a note of reference, you can come around, there's this back entrance over that where that big shaman is, that's where the lower frenzy is, and it has a chance to spawn a broodling or stalker. There's a crystallized camp right down there. So just kind of at a matter of visual, visualization i'm going to do this on live where i spawned everything or mostly everything just so you can get an idea this was really confusing for me when i came the first few times because i didn't know where the name spawned exactly and it seemed to be very dangerous that's where i didn't want to travel but i finally got over my fears and came up here and it wasn't so bad so here's that triangle i was talking about you just take Take it nice and easy right there. You get some slippery camps. And a lot of this stuff that spawned doesn't see in viz, so I got pretty lucky. Again, this is on live. So just follow this, and this is how you get up to crystallize pretty easily. So there's crystallize right there. That's its exact spawn point. So those that cluster of three spawns that is right back by the hallway that goes to the lower and upper dogs crystallize it has a couple nice drops i'm not going to be naming the drop specifically other than the broodling has a chance to drop a silver chitin or chitin wristband which it's a magic item and that's right around where it spawns and what it looks like it's right next to that pillar here's the ramp what is called the frenzy ramp or the frenzy camp spot right below is a safe spot right here the introduction is crystal fang which it's got a nice shield drop but there's a cluster of about five spawns which makes this very difficult to access makes it very unaccessible as a solo necromancer i'll kind of show that off later and then so there you go um, there's my two items that I got and then upper frenzy which is right there that frenzy Velium stalker That's where that fourth name is so you have a cluster of pretty close spawned four names If you had a couple people you can probably keep all these down this zone timer. I think's around 28 minutes so there you go there's hopefully a vis visualization of where the names spawn so if you've ever been through here, or even if you haven't, you kind of get an idea. And I'll let you look at the items that are up there. I'm not going to name them specifically, since this camp is pretty well known. But that'll help you kind of understand the spacing of these. So you have your crystallized camp, the lower frenzy camp, and then the upper frenzy camp. Usually I fight starting, if you're starting from a completely new spawn, a fresh spawn, nobody else is here, I start by crystallize. The reason why is because as you get up to the lower upper frenzy, the likelihood that you're going to come across something that sees in viz is going to be quite a bit higher. So this is a pretty safe space to pull back to as well. You don't have people spawning at the frenzy ramp. People sometimes will camp there, and I, at one point had five, five of the spiders root rotted there, and if somebody would have jumped in, well, they would have got aggro. So just be careful and considerate about people that are grinding here. I'm not going to really go over tactics. Here you can do a combination. Root rotting is, it, it works. These have a high HP, so you're usually going to be running... Splurt and Pyro cure, cure a couple times, and probably you're gonna have to be re refreshing your route at least once per mob. Some of the lower level ones, like the Watchers, don't have a ton of HP, and I think you can get through a cycle of dots pretty easily. 
get up to the Blizzard Hunters, they got around 8, 9,000 HP. Some of the names have 10K, 13K HP, so just be prepared for that. But here's what it looks like. Now, this would have been easier. This camp's really easy to break as a Necromancer. You could probably even do this in your mid-50s. Just to the right there, you can get line of sight and route the furthest um, mob in, the, in this camp to bring the two. You'll just have to come here and kind of experiment with what works for you. You can also send in your pet and do the conga line approach where you're rooting, backing your pet, rooting, backing your pet, rooting, backing your pet. And then applying splurt as, as needed there. So, yeah, just talking through this, there's... And again, I'm, I'm getting away from, <laughs> here's exactly how you do it. You know, come here. I just want to give a basic format and template and formula to help you succeed and just provide a visualization again of what this looks like. Um, so now here's here's I an attempt to break the upper frenzy camp. I'll show you. I was very close to doing this. The problem is my mana pool. So it's, it's, you see there, there's five within a close area yeah this was this was really tough i got all these rooted but mana gets to be a problem after trying to keep up splurt and root on a bunch of mobs it just did not work very well so i'll be showing a remedy to this very soon though I was really excited that I found a back entrance to the upper frenzy. I thought it was pretty cool because from what it looks like, nobody's ever up there in that upper frenzy camp. So yeah, it can be a pretty cool tool, but here's how I broke it. And of course, here's where you would be doing the lower frenzy. Just pull everything right over here. As I sent in my pet, pet to kind of do a conga line, um, I should have kept a lot of those on the ramp. But this is just for, for science to see if I could. I like to challenge myself, even though I'm pretty rusty about, you know, new challenges every once in a while. <laughs> Didn't quite work out to my inception, but hey, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? So I got all these rooted. I did have like a... Um, Pretty sure I had to shield up like a mana skin or something. Got them all spaced out. Now these are a level usually 45 to 47, 48. So with that being said, I did get lucky and get quite a few watchers, which are lower HP, but the devourers take a little bit more. As you see here, I failed to get any down by the time I got to like 30 or 40 percent mana so I eventually just abandoned this and just let it go but lucky for us is in the spirit of adventure I wasn't gonna let my advances be thwarted so came across a druid and another necromancer there there's kind of an idea there having two people right there is really cool um, here's normally where you'd camp out and also be careful on that ramp I didn't mention this but that ramp is slippery so again I just want a word word of caution be careful ramps are slippery here and you will fall down in most cases you'll survive the fall damage but the trains that you're going to that you're going to start up are, are untenable so just be very careful and again pathing is horrible too and mobs do not forget you. They will not forget you. So, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to that second false door leading up to where I was showing you that was looking towards the frenzy camp. And we're gonna take that little, I don't know what you call it. It's a stalag might ramp thing there <laughs> to kind of give you an idea. Right there, there's a little incline to our left that I'm gonna be running up. Now there's two different ways that I got up here. It'd be it'd be wise to clear everything here because if you get seen by a mob that sees invis and it runs up, I again pathing is horrible. 
but just to the right there, you can land on another platform that is otherwise not accessible. So again, just hope for the best that nothing sees in Viz. And we're going to take a leap of faith. As far as I found, nothing here is slippery. So that's good. Success. I got to that pretty easily. Now that's the hard method that you can bypass that mob over there. The second method, if mobs are up, is kind of coming back here again. That's through the crystallized hall, taking this back false door pathway. You're going to commonly come across blizzard hunters here, which see and viz, so just be careful about that. That's my first caution of this area. Blizzard spider does not see and viz. Okay, that's good. We're going to get up here and just take a right. This is a little bit safer because if you... If you were to fall, yeah, it'd be pretty bad fall damage, and it? it's a long way to get back up. So there you go. A little platform there that's semi-safe to pull to. And then ordin or in, in ordinary circumstance, there would be a mob right here, but I think I cleared it out. So that's good. And there's the, there's the breathtaking view of Velkator's castle. I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, that is incredible. How do I get over there? I just can't say enough good things about this zone design, or excuse me, this zone design. I think it's, I think it's, Dragon Acropolis is neat, but this just incredible end game design. You go up in all these ra ra ramps and platforms, there's slippery slopes to slide down, and then you get this back area that's all carved out with a slippery path up but if you fall down there's these lower dogs and it's just incredible such a such a winding winding labyrinth so yeah it was it was it was a nice throwback i i, I this this is a 10 out of 10 zone other than i think the loot could be a little bit better in some of the areas to make it more desirable to come here put some stuff that's not quite best in slot but nice for tradable items which they did in the revamp and it'd be nice to see those implemented in some sort of private server because they're they're nice but they're not game breaking like there's these frosted sleeve of miracles which are 10 wisdom 40 mana plus 10 save magic and some others but there you go. You can come back here. You get about 28 minutes to clear all these. So, yeah, I have at it. It's been a bit since I've done just some grinding. And right now I'm going to take some time just to go over a channel update and kind of let you all know what to expect. First, I wanted to thank everybody. I did get to a pretty large landmark, which is 1,000 subscribers. So... At the point that I stopped last year, I was just like, okay, well, this is, I, I think this is about as much as I foresee my channel going. And thanks to everybody that views and subscribes to my channel, I was able to achieve that accomplishment, or we as a community were able to. Making these videos has been a fun process, especially the video editing. And I just, I really thank this community. I, I, I know there's a lot of bad eggs, but there's a lot of good eggs. And I really just appreciate what EverQuest is and the community is. It's really nothing without the community. And that's what I appreciate about the spirit of the Project 1999 and some of these throwback private servers is that community aspect in the spirit of community is here and, and sharing information. And that's what my channel is about. It's hopefully it's what it comes across as is me sharing information and benefiting that benefits the community, that benefits your play, that benefits your experience with that requester project 1999. So with, with all things, that is my hope and the value that I hope to impart. There's some fun. I, I enjoyed you know, chatting and interacting. That's one of the bad pathing mistakes I kind of noted. So, but that's what I hope to impart. It's fun. I enjoy communicating with everybody and the sense of accomplishment it that I 
have with learning a new skill, video editing, and not just, you know, putting up random clips or me talking over random clips, but creating something, having this inception, going through this ideation phase of, here's what I want to do. What do I want this to overall look like? What do I want the finished picture to look like? And then have to deal with the problem solving mechanics of, it's like, okay, well, I'm extremely, extremely new into this. I'm, I'm quite a bit ignorant from this norm, normally skilled video editors. My software is, <laughs> I've got a train. I don't know how I got it, but that's the fun of EverQuest here. I, I don't know what happened, but anyway, in, in my editing software is somewhat limited. So figuring out what it's capable of of some of the unintended consequences of overlapping dissolves and titles and stuff like that. It's fun to just figure out what it is, but yeah, again, I, I just can't say enough thanks. And it allows me to potentially look at some new avenues of, I don't know what else, what else can I do now? As, as far as it is now, I anticipate keeping this Sarleon's EverQuest Adventures I've thought about branching off to other video games, which I might, but I found out I could just create another channel and I, from what it sounds like, my AdSense account will, um, will carry over to that new channel, which I think is really cool. But I don't know what I'd do. I, I don't know. I kind of want to get away from playing video games. I've been been outside a lot playing basketball i've got family stuff going on i'm getting really involved in volunteering and helping out at my church and work and investing and like there's just so many life responsibilities i just don't have time to do this as much as i want and my desire to play everquest is just going down i've thought about you know blazing another trail and starting another class and milking that for all it's worth i thought it was fun to kind of show what the necromancer class is capable of not that i've done everything but i've done mostly everything that i set out to do and more i just you know it's just it's just tough having these large scale ideas and projects and executing on them in a matter that is as satisfying and not just, you know, putting up clips. And I think that's kind of my limit right now. I've really got to the point where <laughs> with all the video editing, my expectations now are probably higher than I think people expect of me. But now that I've achieved what I have with video editing, I want to do more, which takes more time and makes it less desirable overall. I think the Velius video took me probably 50 or 60 hours. And that's not how long it normally would take somebody. I think that's just how inexperienced I am. And just part of the process of like trying new things. It takes time. So I might kind of scale back my overall quality and time investment a little bit. There's still a few things that I want to get out, but I just don't know what that's going to look like. So that's, again, here's kind of my update. I, I don't know what's to come in the future. I'll try to put some out. I'm going to experiment with just putting some no commentary or some quick clips up. Um, just to see how much people like them or don't like them for that matter. It's kind of tough when I get pigeonholed into a certain type of video style and I'm just going to experiment a little bit and see how it goes. That's how I got here partially in the first place. I mean, I got here because of the community they love and they're passionate about EverQuest. And that's why I'm going to keep this EverQuest. And this is just my unfiltered thoughts. I don't know talking through this, but um, just trying new things. That's that's part of what helped me maintain the motivation. So. Yeah, that's my summary. I don't know what is going to come about. I might try to do some placeholder episodes where I have just a small structure that is 
less edited and if I get around to doing a more feature length upscaled version of that, I can always replace it. So there's stuff like that. I've got a lot of ideas, but I've got a copy of Xenoblade Chronicles. I'm gonna try to get through that trilogy. I did Xeno Saga last year, which good Lord, the um, man, that's probably my favorite sci-fi <laughs> story. Man, that was just incredible. So I, I also want to get around to playing story type games because I don't watch a lot of TV. And just having that aspect of sitting through and experiencing a story is just incredible. And the Final Fantasy VII Remake Rebirth is coming out too, which I'm really excited about that. But just again with my schedule, I don't play video games as much. So <laughs> I've got a lot less time and so. That's kind of my unfiltered thoughts about my channel updates. I don't know what else to say. I kind of failed expectations. I didn't get a lot of items here on this, which I normally am a perfectionist and want to give a full picture, but oh well, I'm just going to have to accept that. <laughs> There's some things that I'm just going to have to throw out and well, here's the base structure and Community will have to do the fun part of figuring it out for themselves because yeah, this this place is just perma camped and it's so hard because that crystallized and that lore frenzy are just so easy to get to and you could sit there the wristband you can get a bunch of yeah I mean you can get ten of them they're magic items and they all sell for quite a bit so you can make a good amount of money that and the gems here so yeah. Channel updates, life updates. Yeah. So, hope you all enjoyed this episode. Hope you all enjoy stuff like this. I think there's a lot of stuff that necromancers are capable of that you can come here and do. There's a lot of danger here, but there's also a good amount of reward. <laughs> but that's... Yeah, it's just my unfiltered thoughts about what's going on. I, th I thought I'd keep everybody up to date because I, I really didn't expect to get this. And I'll be transparent about the ads. I definitely wanted to put and keep ads on my videos. I'm going to try to make them somewhat tenable. I know they're kind of annoying. I did mess around with my AdSense and move some of the more annoying categories. So categorically, I can remove some certain types of ads like pull excuse me, political ads, get rich quick, stuff like that. So I tried to remove those. I don't want to ask too much of people. So if you don't like the ad, ads, I made them all skippable. And I think I put them at the start and finish. So at worst, you can just skip them if you don't want to see them. And I put some of the bumper ads because those are less intrusive. If I do some more, I guess, stripped down content of no commentary, I'll probably just keep the bumper ads and leave off the video ads since technically I'm not putting any any work. And my, my idea is I've, I've put a lot of work into this process and I want to get some sort of reward for doing it. It's rewarding doing it and getting the nice comments and seeing some people so I you know some of my frequent viewers that come which I, I really appreciate my frequent viewers and the people that have been around for a long time so thanks for sticking this out with me but that's kind of my thoughts on it I did put a lot of work into it to get some sort of reward I guess monetarily I want to keep that up because that'll help me consider doing more in the future I don't want to get greedy with it either, so that's kind of what I hope I keep myself to. And I understand some people may not like that, and I, I totally get it. I, I can empathize, at least with skippable ads, I can skip them. I pay for YouTube Premium. I think it's worth it with the download, so I don't have to deal with them as much. And I, but I, you know, I used to watch Twitch quite a bit. And I know that gets annoying with having to subscribe to people just to avoid ads. So, um, yeah, hopefully I didn't scare too many people away. But at this point, I'll be transparent. And I, as ads are, I tend to keep them 
at the level that I have them currently. So, not that I, I doubt a lot of people are going to be listening to this anyway. So, just some transparency. Because I appreciate y'all. I just let y'all know what's going on. But, <sighs> you know, I just get worried I'm going to get judged or something like that. But if people ultimately do, then, you know, that's. Hey, that's your, that's your, that's their prerogative. I'm, I'm not going to shoot you down or I'm not even mad about it, quite frankly, but just so, so you all have a heads up. That's what you got. At this point, I'm just rambling without any sense of direction or such, but yeah, thanks again. This is kind of a reward, I guess, a 1K sub reward for the community and for you all and I'll, I'll try to find out who <laughs> suggested this video in the first place and yeah well i don't know the next time i'll see y'all in my next feature length video but it's been uh, it's been a pleasure thanks all again and i hope this helps you in your spider slaying and loot acquiring journeys take care and we'll see you all next time